Musk put up his last $150 million or $50 million when he uh, sold his, um, when he got his money for, uh, what did he sell? PayPal. PayPal, excuse me, thank you. And, uh, but um, three times I've had to do that. The last time I, uh, we had an 82 million pound bond offering, the Ventures, and um, not one bond was sold. And they had, it was a three week offering, but not one fucking dollar. And we got down to the short strokes, and, uh, and um, 182 million pounds at that time was about 140 million bucks. So, um, and when you pull an offering, it's death. You pull an offering, I mean, you just forget about it. You, you got to go back and it'll uh, take you years. So I, I bought the offering myself, 100% of it. And you have, in those days, you had 21 days to pay. <clears throat> So I'm screwing around trying to free up assets and come up with cash, and, and it's not like some, I'll give you 80 million now and 60 million later. I mean, it's not one of those deals, you know, you gotta pay it. Uh, or it defaults, and um, the, uh, then you lose your credit rating and, uh, uh, in addition to your own reputation. And so, um, three days left to go, I get a phone call and somebody said, uh, you know, um, I, I see that that whole bond offering was taken up. I, I really like some of that. And uh, my ears are, and he says, in fact, uh, I'll take it all. I believed in God that day. And so um, uh, we, uh, we sold it to him, um, and uh, I made on a $140 million investment, I made $3,000. After all of the T's were crossed and I's were dotted. And, uh, but then we took that 3,000, it was 3,000 pounds, and we took that 3,000 pounds, and we went out and got fucked up drunk and enjoyed ourselves. And the, uh, but um, when you have no plan B, as some of you don't, you know, you, you, you gotta, you've got to make it happen. You've got to make it happen. Now, last night, uh, you saw me. What did you see last night? The movie? So we, we, we saw things were rich. We saw... Ah, let's stop right there. Uh, what are the takeaways of thinking of rich? I mean, the book's been around forever and ever. I would say, and there's a slide coming up, uh, don't think and grow rich. Because I believe, even though I, I agree with 98% of everything is in that book, um, it um, promotes procrastination. And which you already suffer from. You don't need any more of that. So I would uh, name it, don't think and grow rich. Okay, now comments. I think there was a lot of people commenting that were so-called ex experts, but they've never done anything. So I would, it sort of discredited the whole film for me. Because well, I mean, and that, that's, the, that's the industry, the personal development industry. There's a lot of guys and gals out there, um, none of which, and I, I won't say that now. When I started 25 years ago, none of which had made any money. Now a few people have made some money. Um, but they, they've become wealthy off their personal development business. They haven't gotten wealthy off the enacting um, uh, financial management or financial engineering. And there's a big difference. As I used to say 25 years ago when I beat in my chest, these guys have made money putting asses in seminar seats, selling DVDs, and now all these other things, uh, and not in building businesses. Uh, when I, when I go to the universities and um, I say, uh, the business schools, I say, how many classes have you had in buying a business? Nobody raises their hand. How many classes have you had in selling a business? Nobody raises their hand. How many classes have you bought uh, in leadership? Nobody raises their hand, with rare exception. At the, at the Air Force Academy and the military academies, they have classes in leadership. Uh, and then I say, how, how can you call this a uh, school of uh, business? The, the, the three fundamentals, two fundamentals, buying and selling, You've never had a class in. And leadership, once you buy something, you need leadership to run it. Um, and now I've shamed, there's a book up here now that about three or four years ago, Wharton started a class in selling a business, selling an IT business. Uh, and so now uh, maybe eight or ten schools across the country have classes in buying and selling. But virtually hardly any schools outside the United States uh, have any classes whatsoever in um, buying and selling a business. Okay, back to thinking a little bit. What else? 
whatever your mind can perceive can achieve. So it's always like thinking about your goals and you create them through your subconscious mind. Um, so making sure that uh, it was following your dreams, persistence. It's all the same stories from all of the videos, all of the key things. Like you said, they're successful clues, so it was just re-emphasizing a lot of the <coughs> stuff that you've taught. When I, first, when I first read Think and Grow Rich in uh, seven, 1972, I think, I underlined it. And then I didn't read it again until, I believe, in the um, early 80s. And I had the same copy of the underlined. And I went back and it was interesting what I underlined in 72 as opposed to what I underlined in 82. And then when I read it again in about 2003, 4, the things that I underlined the first time, I said, why did, how come I didn't understand that the first time? I mean, that's so simple. And most of the stuff that I underlined the second time, it was, just, it was slam dunk shit. Um, and so because I had grown... Um, and matured, uh, not just because, you know, the, the male, the frontal lobe of the a male brain isn't finished maturing or growing until you're 26, 27, or 28, the frontal lobe. <coughs> the frontal lobe of the female brain is mature way before that, way before that. Um, and, the, um, and so when I was, even though I was uh, pretty successful in my mid-20s, um, uh, mostly by design, some by serendipity, but most of my success was because I was around successful people. Uh, and I didn't understand, you, you, you are who you hang around with. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. I didn't know that concept. But I know now, looking back, a lot of these guys I was not hanging with, but I mean I was exposing myself to their business principles, like Bunker Hunt, and, and, and uh, who was um, uh, part of the billionaire uh, uh, Hunt Brothers. And um, it, it, it was quite, quite interesting. Uh, anything else? Okay. No, no, no. He knows who I mean. Let's go. Let's go. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, what feels to be the issue? He's a psycho. Okay. Any reasons for that? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Could he be here on the... No, the I want him out. You want him out? I want him out. He can fill out a report. He threatened him last night, or this morning, I guess, to throw him off the staircase, to take his phone away. I took the phone back from him mm -hmm. because he filmed some of the antics he was going through last night. Uh, and um, I don't have time for this shit. I told him, slipping notes under our door in the middle of the night, pounding on the door last night at 1 o'clock in the morning, our bedroom door, I don't need this shit. He knows that. I told him five times. Mm -hmm. No, no, only the last two times to leave. I told him three times before I'm not going to take this shit. Mm -hmm. So uh, I am a his. Can I explain myself? Or you, you can't. You want you're going to him. Okay, when you want, want a statement. He's not a mentee. That's bullshit. No, I am. You know that. Let's go. Matter, I'm going to be the president. Now, where were we? Um, think and grow rich. Think and grow rich. The, um, anything, any other comments? Uh, Babe Ruth didn't let his bike out. Yeah, up until seven years ago, Babe Ruth led, he hadn't played baseball in 60, 70 years. Up until six or seven years ago, he led in strikeouts still, even though he hadn't played baseball in 50, 60, 70 years. 60, 70 years. But they don't think of him as the, the, the strikeout king, do they? They think of him as the great Bambino, you know, home run hitter, da 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 And the very thing that concerns you about what other people will think subconsciously at least and more probably on a conscious level keeps you from trying because you're what's your mother going to say what's your wife going to say what's your girlfriend going to say etc cetera, etc cetera. and um the um and for whatever reason when we, we, we get down to specifics some of the other things i've already told you how i was raised uh, but one of the things I was thinking about when I was thinking about you, Pedro, I, I, I had an email from one of my cousins. La familia! I mean, I get one a year. I don't, you know, 
and um, is that I wasn't raised as a uh, Latino. I'm, I mean, the, I, I didn't get any, the, you know, any of the Latino heritage or any of that stuff, and my parents didn't speak Spanish at home. And my dad spoke three foreign languages, Japanese, French, and Spanish, and English. Uh, my mother spoke uh, three foreign languages, and they only spoke English. Because at that time, in the 40s, 50s, and uh, the, uh, the racism, if you will, uh, was uh, pretty fucking blatant. And I, I know people complain about it now, and there still is. But, I mean, it was, it was blatant, and my, and my mother especially didn't want me to uh, go through that. Um, what else about um, uh, Think and Grow Rich, if anything? There were uh, 13 principles, but I think what you said was most important. You get caught up in really delving into all of them. Like, for me personally, I grew up with a learning disability, ADD. And I learned differently, and I, I thought you were I, just retarded. No, no. That too. Yeah, but I thought. No, I don't want a bunch of fucking emails. He's not retarded. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Mastermind principle for me was the most valuable thing while I, I was developing my real estate company, and uh, I think you could pick out one or two of the principles and really just run with them um, to tremendous success. But if you just get caught up, and you have someone said on the video, you have to have all thirteen to make it work. I don't think that's quite true. No, it isn't true. <clears throat> and everything, the movie's certainly far from perfect. And the book's far from perfect. It's pretty close. But the good thing about the book is the book has stood the test of time. I mean, you know, I've stood the test of time for 25 years. But the real test is 100 years from now, when little minions are running around still doing uh, QLA. Um, and QLA works with high interest <coughs> rates. It just works perfectly with low interest rates. Okay, and but now I'm sure that some 15, 20 years from now, when interest rates are back high again, some somebody's going to pick out something I said about low interest rates, and they're not going to follow QLA because Dan said it worked perfectly with low interest rates. Well, interest rates aren't low anymore, so I'm not going to even try it. So I'm going to, for those of you that do your research, it works with high interest rates because that's when I did it. It just works better with low interest rates. But almost any financial model works better with low interest rates. Anything else? Three feet from gold. The target story. Three feet from gold. Yeah. And just not quitting. Yeah. And basically, how like he after he sold that gold mine. Now he, he realized, wow, I'm never going to quit again on anything. And he became one of the top producers of the insurance salesman. That really stuck out to me. And also, um, the story of the partner of Edison. How he just, he went there with burning desire, and he just made it happen by just staying focused and being around. Now you know who the you know who was the junior partner of Edison, Henry Ford. Henry Ford was an engineer for Tom Edison. And he, uh, he, on his spare time, he's working on this car thing. And uh, Edison and the uh, senior managers would say, forget that car thing, you got a future here. The future is, you know, Edison and company. And uh, he finally left. Uh, now, uh, Woody had gotten around to making a car. He had already been making cars in his garage or wherever he was making them, in his barn or wherever. And so, um, but those guys in that time frame and these guys in this time frame, you know, the idea 30, 40 years ago was to go to Silicon Valley to be a rub elbows with the, the techie giants. Well, now there's more than, than Silicon Valley. There's maybe eight or 10 or 12 places around the world that have that same kind of uh, uh, ambiance of uh, genius, so to speak. And it's not just techie. Um, what was the other thing you saw? Did you see something else? We saw video advice, just like random clips of like inspirational quotes. Different movies. And okay. then we saw like a trailer with you and Brian Rose for two minutes. Uh, Brian uh, uh, QLA Rose, uh, which I told you I'm going to be uh, interviewed again on the 20th of this month. Um, the uh, and well, I mean, I rest my case. Brian has had a transformation that is is pretty fucking remarkable over four years. Uh, and I told him when I first met him, as I tell you guys, I will change your life. Uh, uh, some of you I will change it 500%, 5,000%, some of you I'll only change it 20%, uh, but I will change your life. And the, uh, there's no question about that. And uh, even if you only follow uh, the, the principles uh, a minimal uh, amount of time, your life's changed. I was just reading a couple of other testimonials from my 25th anniversary. A guy that just came here from South Africa, uh, oh, by your standards, and most of he's wealthy already. 
<clears throat> and but he said that he said that uh, I couldn't believe how uh, and some of you were talking about having uh, higher aspirations, higher goals. How I realized that uh, how uh, little I've accomplished uh, on the worldwide basis. Remember, I used to be compared to just Latinos, and then when I opened up my mind to being compared with, with everybody, <clears throat> my growth took off, and I really had geometric success. success or what I, I coined later on, uh, quantum leap success. Uh, and somebody uh, on the YouTube asked me, how did, since it's my 25th anniversary, how did I come up with QLA? The name. And, um, the, um, and I've said this before, but I went to a J. Abraham seminar. I paid $5,000. I went to everybody's seminars for about 15 months to see what the competition was or the lack thereof. And, he and there was a room of about, I don't know, 500 people. And he passes the mic. Every other person gets a mic and says, my name is Rufus Doofus. I'm here because of such and such. I'm from such and such. Yeah, okay. So the mic was going, the mic went to an old lady next to me. And I took the mic away from the old lady, just like I took it away from the kid in Florida. I stood up and I said, my name's Dan Pena and I'm the father of QLA, Quantum Leap Advantage. And I'm going to change what is now called personal development to high performance financial coaching. And uh, and so and then later on that day, Jay said, "Would you like the uh, the, the podium?" And I, I kept the podium for seven hours nonstop, uh, fielding questions from the kids. How did I come up with QLA? That night, I had watched a program called Quantum Leap. It used to be on television, where this person used to jump from different um, uh, time frames. And so I just said, "Quantum Leap. That's what we're going to do because I know how to do that financially." And it's got to be an advantage, and it's going to be an advantage. And you know, it's got like you're making them a uh, offer they can't refuse. And that's where I came up with uh, QLA. But it, it all happened in five seconds. Excuse me. Sure. Okay. So um, this gentleman here, excuse me, from last night, he is. Eight minutes that he's here for the week for a seminar that he is at, can I? Yeah, but that, that yeah. Just, I just okay. before, okay. you, before, sure. you, before you go on. So, is he registered to stay here for, for this week? Yes. For seminar for, he's now saying that he has nowhere else to go. Oh, or nowhere else to I stay don't care. To, to he's disrupting the whole fucking thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody's afraid of him. He threatened to throw the guy off the fucking stairs this right, morning. Okay. There's no way. He's no, gone. No, that, that, that's fine. I just don't tell him what kind of way we're going to do. Well, I'll put him in jail. I don't care. Well, kind of put him in jail, but... Um, right, okay. So you are not willing to... Uh, he's gone. Anyway, uh, entire... None. Zero. Okay. Truth is stranger than fiction. It is. Um, the short of it is... I'm just misunderstood. But anyway, sounds like when my kids, when I first bailed out my first son out of jail. Okay, um, where was I? Oh, okay, and that's how I came up with it. Now, you are going to do spreadsheets, and you're going to send me names of the business that you want to, it doesn't matter. You can call yourself, I jerk off every morning. It doesn't fucking matter. <coughs> that's what you don't understand. It doesn't matter. We've got guys that have uh, uh, names of companies, Chinese symbols. They're not even Chinese companies that say bad words in Chinese. And that's the name of their company. Now, I'm told that that says Quantum Leap in Chinese up there. But I, would, I don't know if it is or not. They may say, up yours. I have no idea. Um, but you will spend a lot of time on nothing. And, and when I say ask answered, it's because I uh, answered it, uh, you know, multiple times. But uh, you will still ask uh, or have questions that I've answered. Now, the reason I don't let you talk to each other uh, is contrary to um, what you think, you do not share best practices. You only share horror stories. Dan never told me it was this fucking hard. Is, is it hard for you? I mean, that, and that's not the message we once sent. So if I find out you talk to each other, you link fuck each other, you, you uh, tweet fuck, uh, you face fuck, you're out. 
No second chance. You're out. On that happy note, thank you, YouTube.